Your grand seems to have settled in pretty well, then. Yeah, I suppose so, all things considered. That must be a load of your mind, Andrew. Right, if it is. was ever on. No, I'm sorry, Dad. I know you've been worried. I know you couldn't stay up there any longer. I'll go. She's come home in a right irritable mood. Well, she's worried about her gran, Andrew. Your mother? But don't you start as well. Oh, well. Uh, you know, fancy coming to the next home game with son. Well... Ah, leave the lad alone, Tom. Doesn't have to like football. He certainly doesn't. Oh, I forgot it. <laughs> Shinty's your game, isn't it? Aye, well, I played at school. It's a fine game. I played it myself in my time. Ah, I with wee sticks. Yeah, it can be pretty tough, though. Uh, I'll say that again. And who was it? Oh, the woman that finds his dad. Matey! Oh, you've watched it. I told you you're going to Scarborough for your holidays. <laughs> Why now? You think you're going to Scarborough, Andrew? Back end of September. Oh, I was waiting till the prices drop. <laughs> ah, well, February should be a good time for seaside bargains. I don't like crowds. Oh, but nobody on the promenade except you and Nan. You wait too long. <laughs> I don't know why you don't go to Benidorm. Oh, you? Andrew, it's great. Lying back there on the beach all day and then and then sitting up on the terrace at night sipping the ice cold beer. <laughs> I could be doing a bit of that at the back end of September in Scarborough. Now, if you were to go to Spain. Do you know you're right, Jace? Andrew, come on, no. I've never been abroad. Oh, you would enjoy it, man. Oh, you would really. There's the bell again. Where I go? No, it's all right. Since Sandy went to Canada, I seem to have got the job as doorkeeper around here. Coming to the next, swing the axe in the lead over the fourth from Wild Pumpkin. Oh, hiya. Hi. I was wondering if you were back. Oh, and uh, my mum needs a new washer. Ah, oh, well, you better come in, since we're supposed to run a 24-hour service. So, how are you? Oh, not so bad. Still feel a bit bashed up, though. Mm. How do you think I look? Well, it's kind of appealing. You know that lifting look? It's a bit Humphrey Bogartish. Oh, he did all right, didn't he? Oh, certainly did. Sorry I can't oblige by being Lauren Bacall, but I'm not quite the type. Oh, that's all right. I quite like brunettes. It's nice of you. What about the police? Are they going to do anything? <sighs> they said I'd be hearing from them. Mm. Maggie! Aye, all right, I'm coming. Better go and get your mum's washing. Well, again, you know, I'm not excited. You should have it. Work. I was just meant to sail the century. Maggie, why not Jessie are going to go to Venice? Venice? <laughs> For a weekend, just the two of us. I'll never shift your father. <laughs> I like it better here. Oh, how do you know till you try? Talk about stick in the mud. You're set concrete. Now, Maggie, we're going on one of those cheap winter breaks. Your mum and dad went on one of them last winter to Paris. Your dad went to Paris? Oh, he had a great time. You see? I've always fancied Venice. Sailing up and down the canals in a gondola. Oh, with a handsome gondolier to pull you along. Well, well, you never know what the two of us might get up to. Oh, well, don't let me stand in your way. Honestly, it was ever so good of you to give me the money. You know I can't, Nan. Oh, of course no, Andrew. I'll get myself a wee job. You've already got one in the shop. Don't get paid for that. I will, you should. So should Aunt Jessie. Both get wages. Good wages. I agree with Maggie. I must go and get on with some work. Why don't you pay them wages, Dad? 
Well, I'll give your mother housekeeping and pocket money. She gets five pound a week for herself. That's not what Maggie's talking about, Dad. I'm just saying she can't decide to go to Venice or even Rossi for the weekend if she wants to. She's got to ask for the money. And I give her what she asks for when I can. I'm not the Bank of Scotland, you know. But she has to ask. That's the whole point of but it. But having to ask. Ah, you'll never have to ask a man for money, Maggie. <laughs> Stick in her throat. <laughs> well, Dad, what'd you say? What does it to what? Now, you kids are always on at me about something. Well, are you going to pay them wages or not, Dad? Now, look here. We may not be doing too badly at the moment, but we're no out of the woods yet, not by a long chalk. Your dad's right, Maggie. There's nothing to spare. But it's the principle of the thing that counts, even if it's only a few pounds a week. Look, I'll be doing the books tomorrow. I'll see what you can afford. <laughs> you do nothing of the sort, madam. But your Uncle Tom and I run the business, right, Tom? Well, I can't deny that. I will. I think I could. Oh, oh, no doubt you could. I help run the business, and you need Mum and Aunt Jessie's support systems. If you two play outsiders, you'd have to pay them. Your tune's right. Do you know, I never thought but of that. But they're not outsiders. They're our wives, damn it. Exactly. You put upon them because Put upon are... them? Yes, it's called exploitation. <laughs> if we had a union... Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold on. Have I ever kept you short of money? No, no. Hello. Oh, but what Maggie's saying is true, just the Oh, same. hi, James. Oh, bloody <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> pleased to hear from you. We do all the work, Tam and I. What do you think Mum and Aunt Jessie do? Hi. They answer the telephone, serve the customers... Well, I sit on their backsides half oh, the day. Oh, she but it's true. McKinley. Every time oh, it's just you've called it a difficult moment. <laughs> McKinley's and Campbell's are in the middle of a revolution. One long break, if you ask me. Well, no asking. Aren't you giving us two pages of homework? So... Oh, it's the first day over at any rate. Could you hit it that much? Mm. Hello, Jean. Hiya. How are you? Fine, thanks. Who's that? Don't look round. Why did you fancy him? Don't be daft. Ah, so you do. He's looked round too. Stop it, Maggie. You're looking a little flushed, sister dear. You'd give anyone a red face so you would. So what's his name? What about you, mind? It's your admirer waiting for you now. Carry your books, miss. Her? She's perfectly capable of carrying her own books. See you later. See ya. Well, if I can't carry your books, can I buy you a coffee? Yeah, come on. I'm up in court on Friday morning. Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. Just because I didn't have my crash helmet on. I mean, it wasn't as if I hurt anyone. Except yourself. Might have let me off since I did. The law is the law. That's what it seems. You can come and hold my hand if you like. What time? Ten. Hang on a minute, Tissy. Oh, I'm off all morning. It's one good thing about being in six year. So you'll come? Did you have a marvellous time with James? Oh, yeah. It was very nice. You sound too sure. I did. Well, most of the time. Oh, it's just that... Oh, do you know, I wish Colin's mother had not given David a drum set for his birthday. Is James getting too serious? How'd you guess? It's quite easy to see, you know. He wants to push things too fast. And you want to take your time. I suppose that sums it up. I've always needed to take my time to work round to things. Well, affairs of the heart seldom work out nice and neatly. It's a bit of a cliché, I know, but... Well, clichés tend to be true. Mm -hmm. Or uh, is your heart not involved? Oh, it is. Well, at least I think it is. Oh, I'm dead confused. Situation normal. Oh, God, I can't... I'm a minute's peace. I'm with Colin away. You never get out from under? Right. Will you be quiet? I've told you 50 times already! One word from me. Oh, Maggie, I didn't mean to plunge you into the depths. Do you want to change the subject? No, actually, Janet, I'm quite glad to have someone to talk to about James. There's no one else I can really talk to. Well, you know, I'm always here when you need me. Thanks. Sometimes I think if you wouldn't push me so hard, I've always needed to take time to work round to things. 
Cautious McKinley, they call me. Well, there's absolutely no reason why you should feel pressurised. I mean, it's your life. Well, that's how I see it. It's not easy, though, is it? Folk won't let you alone. They want you to be what they think you should be. And then there's Mike. Yeah, I've known him all my life. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I don't know, Janet. That's the trouble. <laughs> oh, well. We're all subject to confusion from time to time. Even you? I'm scarcely exempt. Especially at the moment. How's Colin liking the job? Very much. So you'll stay? He wants to. Keeps phoning up and drilling on about isolated cottages. I mean, that's fine for a holiday. But in the middle of winter? I mean, can you imagine being in your granny's glen all the year round? No, uh, I suppose not. So what will you do? Nothing at the moment. I'm a great believer in doing nothing when you don't know what to do. Just sit it out until you do know. It's not such a bad idea. Oh. Oh, my oh, my God. God. What's wrong? You missed on my drumstick! Alistair, give me the drumstick. No. Please. Do you know, I've got a good mind to burn the damn thing. I didn't say I would. I just said I felt like it. Do you know, I think Colin's mother did this on mm. purpose. Oi! Oi, 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 oi. Oh, Maggie, I think you're right to be set in a career. I don't altogether recommend family life. <laughs> Nice green dress in a shop and buy a road. Hmm? What are you going to wear to the wedding? Morning. You? You'll have to get something decent if you're going to be a witness. It's nice to get Trina to ask us all. Mm, she needs moral support. I think you might get that green dress. You know, I see no reason why Dad and Uncle Tam can't pay Mum and Aunt Jessie £15 a week. Each? Of course. It's hardly what's called a living wage. But they don't intend to live off it. They're going to go to Venice with it. I can just see Aunt Jessie in the back of a gondola. <laughs> <laughs> wonder what colour she got her hair done for that. Oh, sunset red. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could always get James to take you to Venice. He hasn't got two hapenies to rub together. He will have when he qualifies, though. So. Aye, well, that'll be in six years' time. Six? Yes, yeah, six. I'll go and take my proposition up to Dad. Hi, Isabel. Come Hi, on. Yeah. Looking for Maggie? Well, no, not really. I was just wondering if Neil was in. Oh, no, he's away to pictures with Mike. Oh, I see. But thirty pounds would be a lot of extra money to find every week. How many times do I have to tell you? It won't be thirty extra. Look, you give Mum five pounds already pocket money. Aye, but I give her that of the money. I take out the business. OK, we'll take five from that and ten from what's left, but call it wages. Does it matter what you call it? Yes. It's all money. Oh. £30. The other thing is, you can set it off against tax, which the standard rate is a third, right? Which means you'll be saving £10 in tax altogether, which means each wage will only cost you £10 in reality, which is exactly £5 extra per week for each of them. Surely you can afford that. Five quid each. You're just trying to bamboozle me. I'd still have to find a full shot every week. I bet you'd benefit at the end of the year. Aye. The inland revenue's not going to hand me back the tax week by week, is it? Oh, leave it. I intend to. Well, well let's just check. We'll get the right prices now. Oh, let me see. Is that it? Yes, that's a three-night holiday. Uh -huh. right. oh. Do you know, I can hardly believe it. You and I are going to Venice. <laughs> what do you do if Andrew doesn't change his mind? Oh, I'll get the money somehow. <laughs> We'll pick for hotel. Oh? Five minutes walk from St Mark's Square. Oh, hey, you'll need to dodge the pigeons. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm meeting Jean. We're going shopping for wedding clothes. What's going to open it? What about the shop? Your auntie Jessie and I were going out too. It's OK. Neil's man in the fort. They offered. <laughs> oh, it's yourself. You in charge today? You're all away shopping. Is that wedding in Edinburgh they're going to? So are you enjoying your course? Very much. 
What made you want to do marine engineering? I mean to say, you're living away up there in the Glen, middle of nowhere. Miles from the sea. Maybe it was because of that. Every chance I got, I'd go to the coast. Quite a lot of Highlanders go to sea, you know. So what did you have to do to get into college? Well, I had to be sponsored by a shipping company. You didn't need O-levels or hires or anything? Oh, you have to have some O-levels. Physics and chemistry. Chemistry? Could never make head nor tail of that stuff. It was always cars and bikes that turned you on. Up to my elbows and that's all grease as soon as I could walk. <laughs> At least that's what Maggie would say. <laughs> she gone shopping too? Ah, uh, with Jean. Not much in her line, is it? Wedding clothes. She made that quite clear before she left. You think I'm nuts, don't you? The way I trail around after her. No. But she doesn't want to know me. Now that's not true, Mike. OK, so she'll come for a coffee with me. And she's going to come to the court. But she's got that James Fraser. I'm sorry, forget it. It's just that I get wound up at times. My mother keeps telling me there are lots of other nice girls around. Maybe it's just because she's hard to get. Ugh, it's not just that. Anyway, forget it. I don't want to bore the hell out of you. But take Uncle Mike's advice. Don't get mixed up with women who are tied to other guys. Anyone particular in mind? Isabel. Isabel? She's got this guy, Brian Jimison. They've been going steady since primary school. But is it... Well, is it really serious? Deadly serious. They've opened an account in the Bowen Society. <laughs> Oh, aye. What does the bank balance look like now, then? A bit bankrupt by the looks of it. Right, come on, Aunt Jessie. Get your suit out. Oh, it's nice, Jessie. Do you like it? Oh, I like that, Jessie. That's nice. Oh, do you know, I'm really pleased with it now that I see it again, Nan. It's a bit bright, isn't it? Andrew. Well, come on, Mum. Get yours out. Oh, here you are. What do you think? That <laughs> colour really suits you, Mum. Well, what do you think, Andrew? Oh, there's no use asking me about clothes for weddings. You need to get a new shirt. I don't know what I've got to go for. Oh. Because you've been asked, that's why. Go and put the kettle on, Jean. Well, I'm looking forward to it, I can tell you. But we we'll hardly know the folk. Oh, let's see you dress as girls. Oh, oh, Maggie, oh. that's very nice. Oh, what funny colour. Oh, and that's nice too. Oh, successful trip oh, then, eh? Well, it depends on how you look at it. Ah, Killjoy. Oh, come on, now you just say these things to take a rise out of them, now, don't well. you? There was a phone call for you. Did you leave a message? He didn't say it was a he. And was it, Neil? Oh, what a nosy family. <laughs> he uh, said he'd call again. Thank you. I'll get it. Who is it, Maggie? Oh, I don't know. I've only seen him in the street. You know, Jean, she can be as close as a clam when she wants to. I don't know why she got rid of that nice Jackie. Oh, it's Spotty Gibson. <laughs> can I come in? Oh, is <laughs> it? Oh, you don't need to ask. Come on in and sit down. You're one of the family. Uh, I don't know if she'd fancy that. Not in the right mind, would. <laughs> oh, you darling. Oh, here. You'll need to see our new clothes. Oh, hey, that's that smashing. Nice. It's a lovely rich colour, isn't it? I've got a drawn to finish. Better go and get on with it. It's an awful hard worker, that boy. Ah, he appreciates his chances. In fact, he's a nice boy altogether. He'll make some girl a grand husband. Get the mugs out if you like. He hasn't said anything then. Well, no, but what would he say? Oh, it was just. Well, we're getting on really great up in the Glen. Oh, well, you're not in the Glen now. Maybe that's the trouble. How do you mean? Well, you do have Brian in Glasgow. Oh, you haven't told him about Brian, have you? Not a word just past my lips. Cross my heart and hope not to die. Milk's in the fridge. Well, you do have Brian, though, don't you? 20 quid. Well, it could have been worse. Suppose you could have sent me to jail. Would you have come to visit me? Of course. It would have been a new experience for me. For both of us? Send you a nail file baked in a cake. The cake would need to have been baked by G. <laughs> well, hardly by me. 20 quid, though. And that's in short time, too. Cheer up. At least you're alive to tell the tale. 
It's one thing to be thankful for. Oh, well. Glad you see it that way. I didn't say I was thankful. It was good of you to come, though. I think nothing of it. Well, I better get back to work. And I to school. Thanks again, Maggie. Don't forget your helmet now. Don't worry. That for six pounds. I love the colour of that. I'm very pleased. I achieved myself. Thank you. Thanks very much. Cheer bye. Cheerio. Hello, Maggie. Hello. These bath mats are selling really well. Yeah, I'll need to order some more. Where's Mum? At our job. What job? Part time in the supermarket. Did what? Working the detail. <laughs> Amazing. She went after it this morning and they said they could take her straight away, so she started this afternoon. <laughs> it's a piece of nonsense, Nan. I'm earning money, Andrew. Surely you don't mind that. But what about the shop? Jess can manage on her own in the afternoons. Well, I can always give her a hand when I come in from school. Well, who's to get the tea then? It's okay, Dad. We won't let you starve. Well, it's about time we did. You might find you could get to like cooking. Who pays the bills? Aye, all right, we know. How are you getting on, girls? Everything's under control. What's the smell? Curry. Last time you nearly burnt the mouth off us. Well, I made it milder this time, didn't I? I hope so. I don't know what you want to go working in a supermarket for. Money, Andrew. Hi, stranger. Oh, hello. Haven't seen you in ages. No, it's been a long time. Did you fancy going for a walk? Yeah. How are you? Okay. I know you've been working hard, but I have the feeling you've been avoiding me as well. Well, haven't you? Maybe. But why? I thought you liked me. I do, but you've got somebody else. That's it. It's true, though, isn't it? You're engaged to this other chap. Not exactly. It's not official. It may never be. Who knows? But you're still going out with him. Yes. Well, I don't want to cut in on anybody else's... What? Territory? I'm not a piece of ground. I'm just me, Isabel. Look, I know you probably think I'm old-fashioned, brought up in the back. Oh, no, I don't. I just happen to like you, too. Are you trying to say it's got to be either you or Brian? I wouldn't dream of giving you an ultimatum. I've no right. I'd like to see you, but not if you're somebody else's girl. Ah, not too bad. Thank God it's Friday. You on your own? Yeah, Mum's down at school. Oh, kind of wish she is. What about Jean and Jessie? Oh, they're away shopping. To get Jessie a hat. Oh, you want a new suit? Right. She did a normal wear hat. Ah, well, this is for something extra special. Nah. I think I'll have smallpox that day. <laughs> ah, Dad, you made a joke. Oh, a letter from Sandy. Oh, how is he? Fine. See you later. I bet he stays. Aye, I'll just need to take Mum over to see him. I'll read it when I'm having my tea. I don't suppose anyone's got the tea on. Look, I can't be in two places at once, and as soon as they come in, I'm going to Edinburgh. Edinburgh? Yes, I do go there sometime for the weekend, you know. So, I suppose I'll just have to starve. There's always a chippy. Eh? Could have a black pudding supper. The place is disintegrating. Nan's doing the washing on Sundays. Ah, well, if Mum were back in the shop, not having to work outside. Well, I'm going to have to enter this van on my own tonight. Hey, I've just been to the supermarket and your wife rang up my messages. I didn't know she was working there. Aye, well, it's just temporary, like. Ah, uh, well, we'll see about that. Oh, Maggie, have you got those bath mats in? Oh, yeah. What colour was it you wanted? Blue. A dark blue. And when the children grow up, I'm going to have everything white and pale pink. <laughs> ah, here we go. Hey, that's nice quality. It is, isn't it? Hiya. Oh, oh, hi. Hi. Oh, hello, Mrs. Scott. Hello, Mrs. Campbell. Well, did you get it? We've been in every shop in Glasgow. Well, come on then, let's see it. Da! Oh. It's 
a dead match. Oh, good. I thought it was a dead parrot. <laughs> Look, here's a mirror. <laughs> there we go. Do you like it? Ah, I've seen you be worse. <gasps> Men. £25. Is that no something? My first pay packet since I was a girl. And your last. What are you trying to say, Dad? Well, I've had enough of this. You can have your wages now, you and Jesse. Oh, I can earn far more at the supermarket just for five half days. I know what my job back here, Andrew. So far, so far, so good. 